Hello there, Tinker Nerds. Welcome to Tinkernut Labs, where we take what we learned in our last tutorial and take it a step further. If you haven't seen the last tutorial, you can click here to watch it. I showed you how to take a toy EEG and use it to control a TV using the power of your mind. But can you use it to control other things? One great suggestion I got was using it to control your computer. So let's see what it takes to do that. There's a lot to do, so let's start tinkering. As a quick refresher, what we've done thus far is take the Star Wars Force Trainer toy, solder a wire to its transmit pin and one to ground, and then connect it to the RX pin on an Arduino. This allowed us to view our brainwave data in the Arduino serial console. Then we wrote some code that would trigger an event every time our brain data reached a certain state. The task to make this contraption do other things should be pretty simple. You just replace this section of code with a different action, such as sending keyboard commands. But there's a problem. We've been using the Arduino Uno, and it can't emulate a keyboard. That functionality is reserved for the Arduino Leonardo, which would be a totally different purchase. But luckily, if you have a newer version of the Arduino Uno, there's a workaround but it does require resetting the firmware, so let me advise you, do this at your own risk. To reset the Arduino chip, you have to temporarily short the reset and ground pins. So place a jumper or a paper clip to touch these two pins together, and then plug the Arduino into your computer. After you see it power on, you can remove the jumper. Now we're free to load our own firmware. I'll be using Linux to do this, but if you have Windows or Mac, you can use the links in the description to get those steps. In the terminal, update app to get, and then install the DFU programmer. Then you'll want to download the firmware files from here and extract them. Now we can upload these to the Arduino, and here's the process. Erase what's on the chip, load the USB serial firmware, then reset the chip. Then unplug the Arduino to power cycle it and plug it back in. What we just loaded is a patched version of the Arduino software. Now we can open up the Arduino IDE and load up some test software. This initializes the keyboard buffer. Then we set up the serial, a delay, and a randomized variable. Then in the loop function, we set a five second delay, set the first keyboard buffer to zero and the second one to a letter. You can find the USB keyboard codes here. To type R, we'll call 0x15. Then we'll write that to the serial and call a release key function. To create that function, we just reset the key buffers to zero and write it to the serial. Then check it and upload it to your Arduino. Next, we need the Arduino to be recognized as a USB keyboard. So to do this, unplug the Arduino, and then just like we did earlier, add the jumper pin, plug it in to power it on, and then remove the jumper pin. Now in the terminal, we'll use these commands again to erase it, load the keyboard firmware this time, and then reset the chip. Unplug the Arduino to power cycle it and plug it back in again. This time, when you open up a text editor, you should start seeing the letter R being typed. So now you successfully turned your Arduino into a USB keyboard emulator. All that's left to do now is think of some cool keyboard shortcuts and connect it to your mind control headset. Then using the same program that we did in our last video, all we need to do is remove all the references to the infrared LED and replace it with the keyboard code that we used earlier. Instead of just typing the letter R, however, I'm gonna type the word Tinkernut followed by the Enter key. Before we can upload it to the Arduino, we need to repeat the same reset process that we used earlier. So unplug the Arduino, jumper it, plug it back in, remove the jumper, erase the firmware, upload the USB firmware, reset it, and then power cycle it again. Now you can upload the code using the Arduino IDE and then use the same process and steps to convert it back to a keyboard emulator. When we connect our headset, turn it on, and plug the Arduino back into the computer, whenever your brain waves reach the required values, you should start seeing your commands executed. Keep in mind that while the Arduino is in keyboard mode, you won't be able to use the Arduino IDE, which means you can't monitor your brain activity while you're doing this. You can use pretty much any keyboard shortcut or command, so let me know what you guys would do with this setup in the comments below. 
All right, click here to watch my previous videos, and if you got any value out of this video and would like to give some value back, please consider donating to my Patreon campaign, donating via Bitcoin, commenting, subscribing, or following me on Twitter. And as always, for more, go to Tinkernut.com.